Ain't is it? There it is. Shama. Ah. Oh, Ain't is it? No, I'm not Ain't is it? Boom him. Nachon. There they are shooting rockets over residential houses. You could hear the booms in the background too. It's all residential families living here. And they're shooting rockets over it. Freedom fighting. Well, that was an intense way to start the video. Where? Hamas tried to kill us. Where? <laughs> Who? Lorahon. <laughs> Hamas will not get us. Never ever. Never. Ever. They will never see they will never make us unhappy, you know? It's just if every time they try to fire rockets at us, we'll go eat something. Yeah, we just eat something and then we're fucking happy. Yeah. It's been a while for both you and me since we've had to like run away from bombs. Right? Wow. It's Long been years. Ago. Many, many years. I think in the army. Probably it was in the army time that uh, we had again rockets and uh, we needed to hide in uh, the shelters. Yeah, for me it's been a while, at least at least two, three, maybe even four years, and there was a rocket attack. It's been a while. Yeah, I think mine is around 2016, something like this. Same, I think something like that for me yeah, too. Yeah, in uh, Tsukaitan. Yeah. But, uh, so how was it this time? Very nice. I mean, I feel like we're, we're, <laughs> shooting, we're shooting this video right after, but the experience is still fresh. But it's been a while, you know, both of us have been living on a small island in the Philippines in relative peace and tranquility for the last yeah, couple of years. I forgot that even when uh, you know that it's not going to, to hit you, to hit you, even when you know that it's not going to hit you because uh, Kipat Barzel, the Iron Dome, the, this one, you still feel a little uh, unsecured when you hear it, you know, it's... It makes you nervous. Yeah. No matter what, where you are and how much safe you are, it still uh, pump your heart. I, th I think it's important to think about too, where we were. We were near the airport, uh, near the international airport in Ben Gurion, at a friend's house, and a lot of people like to claim that there's no targeting of civilians in Israel and all the civilians are safe. I mean. There was a direct example for you. Bullshit. <laughs> there was a direct example for you. We were in a house with a mom and three kids, three little girls. You have to remember in those moments, there's a lot of panic in your brain. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, you're thinking forward. You're like, okay, if a bomb does fall on us, what is like the next move? What do you have to do after? You have kill you have children around. Yeah. I'm saying this like people in Gaza, the Hamas terrorists that are there are firing and pretending to be civilians, they're dressing in clothes just like me and Philip, and they're firing rockets, tricking people around them to make it seem like they are civilians while they're military, and firing them at other civilians that are living in Israel. It's completely absurd. And uh, it's, it's something that people here are living on in their day to day. I wanna show you guys something that I noticed since I came to Israel now. If you guys look here, this is my Google Maps. This is something I've never seen before in Israel. It shows you bomb shelter and where the, all their locations are around the city here. You can see that up here. There you go. Bomb shelter, bomb shelter, bomb shelter. How normal is that? How normal is that then in a place where Amazon and Google and eBay and Fiverr have headquarters and most of the Intel chips that are being made for your computers and your smartphones that are powering the devices you're watching right now. A lot of the technology behind that and a lot of it is still being produced here or either developed here. How insane is it that on the day-to-day, -day, people using Google Maps here have to think actively about which bomb shelter they're going to run into when this terrorist group starts firing rockets at their city. And we're here in Tel Aviv, so it's not as bad. I mean, has there's been a lot of rockets that have actually fallen in Tel Aviv, but in cities that are south, near the Gaza Strip, I mean, it's been almost every single day for those people. So, as opposed to me, who I've only lived part of my life here in Israel, Philip has lived his whole life in Israel. And also, I should make a mention, Philip has a YouTube channel now. You guys should go subscribe to him. He's been cooking a lot of amazing food. It's a lot of cooking stuff. Check out his YouTube channel down below in the description. So, for you, the bombs and rockets being fired by Hamas and other terrorist groups has been, it's been something you've experienced your whole life, no? Yeah. Um, in uh, Lebanon, the second war with Lebanon, 
uh, it was 2006 we were all kids me my brothers and my cousin we live in Binyamina where is Binyamina in Israel uh, part of the north let's say uh, we used to run uh, alone to the shelters you know because my parents uh, was in work and in school they teach you how to put a uh, abach mask a uh, gas mask gas mask and uh, you have it in the shelter already ready prepared to to put on yourself with food with games of course and uh, you just hear the sirena you run uh, to the shelter and you come back to your uh, normal life after two three minutes but this is how we grew up you know we used to it and it's sad actually to be used to this uh, situation yeah because kids kids supposed to play outside with the ball and not uh, to be in the house it's supposed to live in peace a kid is not supposed to have to think that a terrorist organization is actively trying to kill his people and i want to make a point because i'm making this point in every single video and until i die i will continue making this point in every freaking video we make in israel this is the product of refugees he's but it's true <laughs> how absurd is that that is so insane that his his family came from refugees. and my grandpa uh, was kicked out from egypt long and, time ago and then to end up here and the grandson of refugees who were kicked out because they were jewish is a wach kefit he's being hunted down hunted like an animal as a kid i think if you are a jewish it's sad to say but you are hunted everywhere everywhere you go this is again i don't feel it where we live now but around the world you have a lot of places that do not welcome you it's until true. today like they live like primitive times i got this comment on my channel recently a lot is about victim mentality people saying that us jews we need to get over the holocaust and we need to get over this and we're just victims so, yeah but look what happened we over the holocaust and look what's happening now man 7 of october it's kind of a holocaust they fucking come and kill and kidnap a lot of people and they don't care where are you from what is your nationality nationality this one <clears throat> they don't even How care old are you? they don't care they didn't care if you were arab or if you were jewish okay, if so. you are uh, israeli arab we call it they kidnap them too man it was crazy and they, it, they got filipino they got israelis they got babies and old people and just for your information, when you say Israeli Arab, that really just means Palestinian. It's a Palestinian who identifies with the passport they were given. And they live here between us, peacefully and... With full rights. And, we, and I have, actually, I have a good friend <coughs> too, that they are Israeli Arabic and I love them. And you have to remember, there are full documented videos of Hamas terrorists breaking into Israel on October 7th and killing Palestinians, killing Arabs, like openly with no regard for where they're from or their life. And to, I want to tail into what Philip was saying about the story of growing up with bombs. Well, I didn't have that experience so badly of growing up with uh, bombs all the time. It was very few when I lived in Israel as a kid. My mom told me stories, and my mom again is a descendant of Iraqi refugees to this country. Iraq kicked her parents out when they were just kids, when they were teenagers, because they were Jewish, not for any other reason. Not that there was any sort of civil war or anything like that. Just for being a Jew, they were kicked out and killed en masse. And they made it here to Israel. And there was years where Saddam Hussein and his army fired chemical weapons towards Israel. And so as a kid, my mom used to have to know how to put on a gas mask in her parents' house. That was something that my mom grew up with. My mother, that's one generation of, removed from me. It was about of uh, school. Like in school, they teach you how to put a gas mask. You, you get trained of it in the school. It's crazy thing. I supposed to learn history or mathematics or whatever and teach you how to put gas mask. This is how the reality here in Israel. So while, while life 
has moved forward since October 7th here. And things are, I, I don't want to say going back to normal because we have soldiers from the IDF who are dying every day and people who are being injured and there's still rockets being fired every single day into Israel But from Gaza. Start to leave. This is the, it's the idea and it's why I wanted to make this video. I know it's not like a crazy video with a expansive background. There's nothing amazing happening. We're not eating any food that's amazing. It's just simply, we had to, at some point in our day today, take a break from everything because people tried to kill us. People tried to fire rockets at us and we saw the bombs exploding, we heard the sound. And that was casual. And now we're back in our normal routine for the day. That's what life in Israel is like. And that's what it's always been like for the last 75 years that this country has existed. It's something to keep in mind, especially when you are typing away your comments on YouTube and you think you might know everything, you think you might know the reality of what's on the ground here. You have to keep in mind that people have been living with a sense of generational trauma that keeps being reinforced. My parents, his grandparents, our aunts and uncles have all had the threat above their head that they will be killed or murdered for being Jews. And even till this day, we're the descendants. We have nothing to do with what our grandparents did or their actions did. We're the descendants of that. They're still trying to get us. That's something to keep in mind. When you're sitting home, watching this video from America or from Canada, or from the UK or from Spain, wherever you are. Wherever you are and write bullshit and nonsense that you don't know and not connect. And if you're not connect to this situation, why to be involved? Live your life, be happy. Spread the happiness. <laughs> But why, why to, you know, we have a lot of uh, common friends, even where we come from, like where we live now, that upload nonsense to their stories without knowing nothing. Yeah, it's very disheartening to see people that we know in our personal lives actually pick us, not even pick a side, but post out of complete ignorance things on social media pretending as if they know what's actually happening on the ground. The reality is that even the people on the ground still don't have all the pieces 100%. We still don't even understand 100% of what's happening all the time. So how can you, how can you as an outsider, somebody who has never been here, expect to understand what we're going through? Oh, they understand everything. They see all the fake videos and all this bullshit <laughs> in social media, so they know everything. You gotta, you gotta be able to acknowledge that you don't know that what you're seeing is fact online. If you wouldn't believe it coming out of North Korea, you shouldn't believe it coming out of Palestine, quote unquote, which is completely funded by Iran. All right, we just got some quick takeout from a place we really love called Yafa Knafe. But here specifically in Yafo, I want to be careful with how I speak because uh, I know that the things that I say can actually, it can trigger people and not in the way that you would think. But that joint right there, Yafa Knafe, is owned by Israeli Arabs, also Palestinian, basically. And we got here, this is, in Hebrew, it was written Trilatches. And we asked the uh, the Arab owner of the store what this is, and he said it's a Tres Leches, which is, you know, like a Spanish cake. And what we were talking about the other day, if you guys watched our video from the market, is how all the food in Israel is basically brought from different places around the world. So here, In Yafo, you have a place that's owned by Israeli Arabs or Palestinians, as you would like to call them, selling tres leches cake in a style they say is the it's Turkish, the way, Turkish to way to do it. Way. And this whole place that we're walking around right now, Yafo, was pretty much developed by the Ottoman Empire, which is a Turkish people. So you're going to have two descendants of refugees in the country eating a Turkish cake sold by Palestinian people. Very interesting. And you tell me there's not something absolutely beautiful about that? So, uh, we've got some Turkish tea with Nana. We got some Turkish black coffee. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about everything that I've been saying. You can talk, I will eat. But yeah, before we do, as me and Philip always like to put food into everything, this is an Ottoman tres leches cake. I've never tried this before in my life. Wow, it looks amazing. Is it amazing? Why, why, oh, why? Wow. Caramel. Mmm. Holy fucking shit. Wow. Man, what the fuck is this? How have we never had this before? I don't know. Oh my I god. I to get another one. Oh my god. 
Oh my god, that's so good. I feel orgasm in my mouth. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that layer of caramel sauce on top. Mm. Man, it's so good. It's so good. I know this video should have ended a while ago already. I keep talking. But I really, I really have a hard time intaking all the feedback that I get online that says or tries to point me or my people as colonizers or something something of the sort of that we're sitting in a place right now that has been inhabited for thousands of years palestinians or arabs were not the first to settle here but here we have a continuous legacy and we me and philip happen to be showing this to you guys through food but we have a continuous legacy of people mixing the pot together this is a spanish turkish style cake that's served in israel that's served by arabs in israel in a country that's now ruled by Jewish people, but coexisting between a bunch of different nationalities and religions. I mean, when we bought the cake right now, we were served by Arabs only who were Muslim. One of them was a sheikh with a hat on. And there's no problems. It's just love. You love. And it's so yummy. I like it. You can speak. I will finish it. So, so damn good. I'm tired of the narrative, guys. I'm tired of the mainstream narrative that there's something wrong with this place. There's a lot of issues, obviously. Not everything's perfect. Like everywhere. Like everywhere in the world. I mean, I've lived in many countries around the world. None of them have been perfect. And I have nationality in two that are both far from perfect, but uh, I'm tired of this narrative that I keep seeing that everything is a problem and this place needs to be dissolved or is a mess or it's wrong that it exists. And with, with the little things like this, a tres leches at the end of the day, and some... Uh, and some Arab tea reinforces all those positive feelings. A huge, huge thank you to everybody who's been massively supporting the channel in the last few videos. Also, obviously, of course, we gotta give uh, Aquaman from Walmart a little bit of a shout out. Remember, guys, go subscribe to his channel on YouTube. Help me help him because we wanna see his channel grow and become a presence here on YouTube. And to have more uh, food. And to have more food. More Cheers to more food. But on a serious note, I really, really, really appreciate everybody's support from, uh, from these new videos. It's clear to me that you guys want to see me here in Israel, so I'm staying for now, uh, thinking about it long term. So I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it means the world to me that you guys are back in full drove supporting and watching every video. And we'll see you guys in the next one. I love you a long time. Goodbye, class.